Hey, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're shooting Hornady's 135 grain flex tip out of the 300 blackout. And here's your box for that Hornady custom 135 grain FTX 300 blackout load. There is your velocity information right there. Let's go ahead and open it up. Take a look at the bullets themselves. Brass is nice and clean looking. Pull one out, take a look. There it is, there's your flex tip right there. Good looking stuff, let's see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Ranch, chambered in 300 blackout, of course. It's got a 16 inch barrel up top. I've got a Vortex Crossfire 2 scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my 20 round magazine cuffs. Pop that open, you've got a 20 round magazine close at hand. Really helps turn the Ruger American Ranch rifle into the perfect truck gun or camp gun. Coming around to the other side, I've got my wild boar design on there. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. It'll be linked in the description and the pinned comment. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Hornady Custom 135 grain FTX bullet out of the 300 blackout. And we managed to capture all three bullets finally because the last two loads I've tested were a bit of hijinks. I'll explain in a minute, but let's take a look at penetration. So it looks like there's one right there, 25 inches. There's another one that's, we're going to call that 25. And then there's one right here under this bubbly part that is basically 25 as well. Incredibly consistent penetration. And it does look like we got a bit of expansion too. So it looks like it performed pretty good. Let's go over to the first block and it looks like we have some wound cavities that open up pretty shallow into the bullet's path. Looks like between about uh, the two, the two inch and four inch mark, maybe the two inch and five inch mark, you have that wound cavity that opens up. So very rapid expansion, and then it just keeps penetrating from there. It is a hot one as I record this, but what I mean by, um, having some hijinks with some of the 300 blackout loads so the last two loads that i tested i had to scrap the videos of because i couldn't capture the bullets one of them was the hornady custom 110 grain cx bullet which i was really looking forward to seeing but as best as i can tell that bullet is just zipping straight on through three entire blocks as you can see here i started stacking three blocks for 300 blackout just because of complete lack of expansion and extreme penetration um, trying to catch these bullets with the three blocks instead of my normal two and i just couldn't do it i fired uh is it 16 rounds of that 110 grain cx bullet and couldn't capture one of them they they zing out the side of the block they changed their path um, really rapidly and i still have a plan to try and catch some i'm going to stack up like 18 blocks on the table and catch some of those things and then i also tried the uh, winchester target subsonic 200 grain open tip bullet and same thing it seemed like there was no expansion at all and the bullets would just zip right on through three entire blocks so some hijinks with 300 blackout it seems to be quite a finicky cartridge in terms of bullet performance i'm seeing a, a pretty good range of of performance on impact across the various types of loads that i've tested so far and i've got more to come anyway that's a bit of an aside but figured it might be interesting to you and let's take a look at the velocities for that Hornady Custom 135 grain FTX bullet out of the 300 blackout. Our high was 1996, our low was 1952, and our average was 1975. 
All right, let's take a look at these bullets for that Hornady Custom 135 grain FTX load out of the 300 blackout. I don't know about you, but I am pleasantly surprised by how these look. We actually got some fairly consistent mushrooming around the entire circumference of these bullets. Not something you see in every 300 blackout load. So first, we're going to go ahead and talk about weight retention. Respectively, we saw 98, 96, and 99 grains of retained weight for an average of 98 grains. That works out to 72% weight retention. That's a little bit less than some other 300 blackout loads we've seen, but like I said, these expanded a little bit better, so not really surprising. And even then, we're still looking at a 98 grain average, so that's about the same as a 100 grain 243 bullet right out of the muzzle. And now we'll talk about expansion. Respectively, we saw 0 0.57, 0 0.60, and 0.56 inches of expansion. Very consistent across the board for all three bullets. That works out to an average of 0.58 inches expanded diameter. And that is 1.9x expansion. And again, the expansion is a lot more consistent than some other loads that I've tested. So I'm actually really, really happy with this. And now on to velocity. So 300 blackout just isn't a real barn burner of a cartridge our high velocity was 1996 our low was 1952 for an average of 1975 the build velocity on the box was 2085 feet per second so we're coming in 110 feet per second slow a little bit surprising because a lot of the 300 blackout loads i've tested thus far are a lot closer if not actually hotter than the factory stated spec so we came in a little bit slow here and now on to penetration. We had incredibly consistent penetration. We saw 25 inches across the board for all three bullets. So, of course, the average is 25 inches. That is really, really good. A lot better than I expected, especially with that expansion and the relatively low velocity. So I'm very happy with penetration. It is right up there with some of the deeper penetrating 300 blackout loads that I've tested and deeper penetrating than some of the loads I've tested that actually got consistent expansion, which are few and far between. Between. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Hornady Custom 135 grain FTX load out of the 300 blackout. Overall, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the results of this test. We had pretty good retained weight, 72%. It's definitely not the highest out of 300 blackout loads I've tested, but what we did get is much more uniform expansion than a lot of other loads. Now, it may not have expanded as much as some, but it was very uniform, meaning when you look at it from the top down, that mushroom is all the way around the circumference of the bullet, whereas some other loads I've tested, it'll have like a prong sticking out here or there. It's not really uniform expansion, so you're not getting as much surface area punching through whatever you're trying to shoot. So expansion wise, weight retention wise, I'm actually really, really happy with this load and I'd definitely consider it myself if I was going to hunt with 300 blackout. Moving on to velocity, it kind of is what it is. We were a little bit slow. Some 300 blackout loads actually exceed factory stated velocity. Why that is, I can't really say. Velocity is the last thing that I'm really worried about anyways, especially on sort of a close range cartridge like the 300 blackout. And then penetration wise, we had excellent penetration, especially considering that big uniform expansion we saw, or at least big for 300 blackout, 25 inches across the board, good expansion, deep penetration, velocity was fine. As far as I'm concerned, this is a contender for hunting. If you're going to be hunting with a 300 blackout, it has performed a lot better than some other loads that I've tested. And then for the first time ever, and I'm going to do this in every video going forward, we're going to talk about kinetic energy. It's just another metric that we can look at to help sort of guide our decision. So this ammo, this 135 grain FTX load, I've got my cheat sheet here, with a 135 grain bullet, because that's what's going to hit the target, and an average velocity of 1975, about 7 feet from the muzzle, we're getting 1169 foot-pounds of kinetic energy right there just past the muzzle of the rifle. So down at 100 yards, it's going to be somewhat lower than that. So what does that tell us? Well, the long-standing sort of norm for acceptable medium game hunting cartridges is 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. Now, make of that what you will. Some people don't really believe in kinetic energy. Some people don't think it really means that much. But if nothing else, it's a metric that we can use to compare different loads to each other. And 1,169 foot-pounds really isn't that much. If we're going to use the old standard of 1,000 foot-pounds for a deer, 
we're right there at the muzzle at 100 yards, at 50 yards. We're probably going to be right at 1,000, if not below. This just goes to show the 300 Blackout, it's not a very powerful cartridge. And I don't know, it might make you think twice about hunting with it. Or at the very least, make you think twice about the distance at which you're willing to shoot at a game animal with it. Let me know your thoughts about this particular load in the comments. I think it's a really interesting load. If I was going to be hunting with 300 Blackout, this would definitely be towards the top of my list of contenders that I would be picking from. This Hornady Custom 135 grain FTX load. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me how can you be a part of this and help support the channel. Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.